impressed you'll like this. Um, tonight, we're going to be doing things a little differently. If you've turned up to these talks before, we've taken you through our universe. But tonight, we're going to have a go at a different one. Our universe started off in a certain way. It evolves according to certain laws. But what if we change them just a bit? What if we made gravity a bit stronger today? What if it was four-dimensional? What if we made the universe, you know, we packed a bit more matter in, or a bit less, or made a bit more lump? What would happen? How do those universes turn out? Well, in a word, disastrously. Even the smallest changes to the laws of physics, as we know them, tend to make a universe which is completely unlivable, which could not support intelligent life. This is called the fine-tuning of the universe, and is frankly one of the most baffling facts in all of science. So what exactly goes wrong? I'll take you through the details. To do this, we're going to order a new universe. <laughs> so let's start at the beginning. Starters, of course. How would you like your universe to start off? In particular, how much matter are you going to cram in early on? How much matter are you going to start off with before it does anything else? You're going to need to be very careful about this. Because if you put too much in, the universe expands, as we know, but the matter makes it slow down. So too much, and it stops and starts coming in, and you get a big crunch. That's what it's called, a big crunch. Not enough matter, however, and everything thins out too much. We need matter to, to come together to make things, like you and me, planets, stars, and all that. So if you don't put enough matter in, you're not going to make anything. The universe will expand too fast, and nothing will ever run into anything else. Now how exact do you need to be? Turns out if you wanted to write down your order, you'd need to give it to 55 decimal places in order to get it accurate enough. If you mess up that last decimal place, you ruin the universe. <laughs> You're also going to need to put some lumps in there. If you have everything perfectly smooth, or even just not lumpy enough, once again you have the same problem, things aren't going to collapse into stars and planets and all that sort of stuff. You just get a bland hydrogen soup. However, too much chunkiness, lumpiness, and you don't make stars and planets and galaxies and people, you make black holes. And any matter in the universe gets crushed into oblivion. That's not good either. The other thing you'll need is a cosmological constant, and I should stand back because that happens. It's very easy to mess up. The cosmological constant, you can think about it as a, a sort of energy that's sort of anti-gravity. That's good enough for now. Um, particle physics, the way we understand the world at the moment, gives us a range for the cosmological constant, values that it could <coughs> naturally take. So you, you get to choose along that line somewhere, let's say. But again, be careful. If you choose at random, the probability that you will get a life-permitting universe is one in that number. <laughs> that's 53 zeros. Uh, that's a lower estimate. Some people want to put 120 zeros on that. Uh, but there's not room on this line. <laughs> if, you put, if you make your cosmological constant too big, you just blow the universe apart. You get that thin hydrogen soup again. Too small, and again, the big crunch. So let's assume that you've ordered your universe well. You've chosen wisely. Let's, let's just see where we're at at the moment. What you have, are, at the moment, your universe is filled with the ingredients of atoms. Not atoms themselves, but just the bits. This, you may have seen before, this is what an atom looks like on the inside, and nice and colored. Um, in the middle, you've got protons and neutrons. The protons are positively charged, the plus sign. Going around the outside, you have electrons. There's no test at the end, so if you forget that, don't worry. Just get the vague idea. These are the bits of atoms. What you have is not atoms, but they're just sort of spread out across the universe. What's going to happen next in your universe is that it's going to come with some nuclear reactions. Everything is so hot and so dense that these bits are going to start to smash together and making atoms. Now the important thing about this process is, you need leftover protons. The blue ones. 
The reason for that is, jumping ahead a little bit, they're going to be the fuel for stars later on. So if you don't have those left over, you need to make stars out of something else, and they burn out at least 30 times faster. So that's, that's no good. However, at the moment we've got equal amounts in our universe, in the one we've ordered, we've got equal amounts of protons and neutrons. And what happens next is they start pairing off and making helium, the stuff in balloons, that stuff. But can you see the problem? We've got equal amounts and we're putting them together equally into helium, so we're just going to make a whole heap of helium and there's going to be none left over. We need that leftovers for stars. The way our universe gets around this is by something called the weak force, which is a bizarre thing, and the most important thing it does uh, in terms of us, it's one of the four fundamental forces, it can change neutrons into protons. And you can see what happens. You get the proton pile to be bigger, and then, hey presto, you've got leftover protons. So, make sure you order a weak force with your universe. And make sure it's strong enough to change a lot of these things over. However, don't make it too strong. It'll destabilize atoms later on. So be careful. The neutron is also very slightly heavier than the proton. 0.1 of a percent. So like one part in a thousand. Heavy. If you mess that up and accidentally make the proton heavier, then this, whoop, this goes the other way and you turn things into neutrons. And neutrons don't make atoms, and so you've messed up your universe. So be very careful, make the neutron heavier than the proton. Also, the thing that holds atoms together, where are we? Helium. The thing that's holding helium together is called the strong force. Now, the way I want you to think about this is think of those two guys, the proton and the neutron, as having little tiny muscly arms so that they can grab on to each other when they're close. If you make the strong force a bit too strong, however, then you can, a proton can grab onto another proton and those two will join up. But we need those leftover single protons, remember? So that's also a bad idea. However, remember, your strong force is holding your atoms together, so don't make it too weak either. Because you're going to have a lot of trouble living if all your atoms fall apart. <laughs> so, here's where we're up to. Here's your order. We've got our leftover protons. We've done that very well. We've got the occasional helium nucleus hanging around. Now, what can these elements do? The answer is, not very much. See, life needs interesting elements, okay? Things like carbon. Carbon can join to itself and make long, stable chains. Now, that's very important, because if you've seen a DNA molecule, you know, DNA, that long spirally thing, that's where all the instructions are to make you. So you need it to be rather long, because it takes rather a lot of instructions to make you. Carbon can do that. Oxygen has uh, a... a uh, the very important property that it can power reactions. It's very reactive, so it will do things. It's an energy source for life. You need both of those, but life makes use of more <coughs> elements than that. Uh, there's iron in your blood, there's calcium in your bones, there's phosphorus uh, powering each cell in your body, there's magnesium, uh, which is powering each cell in your body, sorry. Phosphorus is helping plants make uh, energy out of sunlight. So we need all these interesting elements, but these two, a single proton is just hydrogen and helium, are just too simple. I mean, the only chemical reaction you get there is one helium atom will join to another helium atom and that's it. Hydro uh, sorry, hydrogen will do that, helium won't do anything. So we need these interesting atoms. So where are we going to make them? Because the Big Bang won't do it for you. 